All right, in this example, we're trying to find all the relative extrema for hyperbolic sine squared of x. Now, this is a topic that we studied in Calc 1 with polynomials and all those sorts of types of functions, but we're trying to apply this idea of finding relative maxes and mins for these new guys that we've uh, recently learned about called hyperbolic functions. So we use the same processes, same procedures, you know, you can use the first derivative test or the second derivative test, and uh, you can watch those videos if you're a little rusty on on what those uh, techniques were to find maxes and mins. But I'm going to assume I'm going to assume we already know how to how to do those things. All right. So um, in any in any case, um, the way we begin finding extrema, you recall, is we have to find the function's critical values. We have to figure out where is this guy's derivative either zero or not defined. So let's let's start by doing that. So we'll take uh, f prime, take the derivative of the function. This would require the chain rule because you have an outside layer, the square, and an inside layer, the hyperbolic sign. So we'll differentiate the outside, bring the 2 down, we'll leave the inside, hyperbolic sign x, and then we'll follow that with the derivative of the inside, which is hyperbolic cosine of x. So this is re really just a good old fashioned uh, chain rule derivative of the outside keep the inside followed by the derivative uh, of the inside and uh, and this is what has to be either equal to zero or not defined now one one thing i know though is that um, uh, hyperbolic sines domain is all real numbers and hyperbolic cosines domain is all real numbers so there's not going to be any place where this derivative is not defined but there might be some places where uh, this equals zero so this, I think it's pretty clear what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take um, this expression and set it equal to zero, and take this expression and set it equal to zero, because the only way a product can be zero is if one of these terms are, are zero. All right, so I went ahead and set that up here. Now the two is somewhat irrelevant because uh, uh, two, two is a constant. Two will never be zero. And so when you set this expression equal to zero, even if it had the two, you could divide both sides by two and then it wouldn't be there anymore. So anyways, um, should be pretty clear that we don't, don't need the two. But where is this equal to zero and where, the, where is this equal to zero? Uh, well, there's, there's a couple different ways you, you could approach this. Um, you could either like think of it graphically, you know, because we, we, we know what hyperbolic sine looks like and we know what hyperbolic cosine looks like. Those were the catenary guys we talked about in a previous video. And so uh, w one thing we see right off the bat is that this is not going to be zero and this will be zero. But let's, let's pretend we didn't know that. I mean, because obviously if you're stuck with a harder example, it wouldn't be quite, quite so easy. So let, let's do this more algebraically. Uh, we know the definition for hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. So don't, don't forget that. So um, looking at it this way, one, one thing I can tell right off the bat is um, e to the x is always positive e to the negative x is always positive, and so you have a positive plus a positive divided by a positive. There's no way this could ever equal zero, and I think that's a pretty safe assumption and something that we should notice. So it's pretty, pretty clear, either graphically or algebraically, that this guy will not yield any answers. However, this one will. This one will. Matter of fact, we even saw it. Um, it looks like, just kind of cheating a little bit, Looks like it's at, at zero, but again, let's pretend we don't know that. Okay, so if we did this algebraically, what we could do is um, we could move uh, the two to the other side. We could multiply both sides by two in effect. And we'd have e to the x minus e to the negative x equals zero. We could add e to the x to the right-hand side. We have e to the x equals e to the negative x, which is uh, in effect this guy right here is really like 1 over e to the positive x because of that negative exponent, of course. We could multiply that e to the x up to the left-hand side and get e to the 2x uh, equals 1. And so when is e equal to 1? Well, it's when the exponent equals 0. So if x was 0, 2 times 0 is 0, e to the 0 is 1. And this guy is a critical value, critical value for, uh, where is it, for this original function. 
So it, there's a, a good chance that um, this guy is either a maximum or a minimum at this point. Now, which is it? We don't know. Uh, now, that would be the next question is, what is this critical value? Uh, is it a max or is it a min? Now, there's two ways uh, to check this, and both are valid ways. I like both of these ways. We could either use something from Calc 1 called the first derivative test, and that's the test you recall from Calc 1 where you make the number line, you put the critical point on it, and you pick test points on either side, and you know all that good stuff. Or we could use something called the second derivative test, and that uses the concavity of the function to see if it was a max or min, also a good test. Um, I think I'll go with the second derivative test. Uh, I think that would probably be a little easier for this example, but uh, I would encourage you on your own paper, maybe also try the first derivative test just for extra practice or something. Okay, so what I need is I need to take this um, derivative right here, f prime, and I need to find f double prime. And uh, I was gonna do that on another page, but I'll, I'll just do it right here. If you don't mind me just erasing this real quickly. Okay, so we have something to look at. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't I do it on a fresh page just so we have plenty of room. So F prime is two hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine. Let's do this on a fresh page. Make sure we have plenty of room. So let me jot this down again if you give me just a second. Two hyperbolic sine of X, hyperbolic cosine of X. All right, let's take f double prime now. Uh, a product rule here, derivative of the first to derivative of hyperbolic cosine will be, I'm sorry, derivative of hyperbolic sine will be hyperbolic cosine of x uh, times another hyperbolic cosine of x, which will make this squared, uh, plus the first to hyperbolic sine of x times the derivative of the second. Derivative of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine. So that'll make that hyperbolic sine uh, squared. So this is the second derivative. And for the second derivative test, all we really have to do is plug in our critical value in for x and, and see what we get. So f double prime at zero would make uh, two hyperbolic cosine of zero squared plus two hyperbolic sine of zero squared. Now we know what both of these values are. Um, hyperbolic cosine of zero is one. One squared is one, one times two is two. Hyperbolic sine of zero is zero. And so it looks like our second derivative is zero. Um, what's interesting is not the fact that it's two. What's interesting is the fact that it's positive. If you remember the uh, the second derivative test, what it meant was if you had a second derivative that was positive, in other words, f is concave concave up, that's what a positive second derivative tells us, if it's concave up, any critical value that you may have is a minimum. It's a minimum, all right? And so that, that tells us we're done, we're done. So um, we found the extrema of this guy. There is no maximum, but because we um, found a critical value uh, at zero and we checked it out, we verified it, we did the second derivative test, um, this critical value at zero turns out to be a relative, a relative min, relative min. That's all the critical values, I'm sorry, all the extrema that, uh, that this particular function has. Um, if you had a different hyperbolic function, the process really wouldn't change a lot. You would need to find critical values and then either use the first or second derivative test. Uh, really, the choice is yours.